Mark Oppold, as we begin a Wednesday here, it's Crop Report Day. It was Crop, crop Progress Day yesterday. Uh, I took my speech lessons from Janet Atkinson here. <laughs> Looking at the uh, grain trade here, kind of a, we'll see if they mark time ahead of the numbers coming at noon Eastern, 11 o'clock Chicago time. But doesn't mean we don't have information to you for you. And uh, considering what's going on, let's go to our friend uh, Rich Nelson from our friends at Allendale. Rich, you and others are kind of, uh, are you marking time or is this trade going to move on regardless of what the numbers show in a couple of hours? Oh, this is a pretty exciting day for everybody to think right now. A lot of focus on these new crop numbers and obviously USDA is not going to give us anything surprising for the production side. They kind of follow a certain path on how they make these numbers at, at so early in the market year. But uh, what we're really excited about is USDA's uh, kind of first crack at really some strong new crop-based uh, demand numbers and also the ending stocks. So, yes, this does set a tone for us and, and uh, the rest of the trade here for this, uh, these next few weeks. Take a look at the numbers here. First of all, production, as you mentioned, the corn and soybean uh, production estimates here that the trade ends. And uh, viewers and listeners may wonder, well, Rich, how can they, they able to have the crop in the ground here? 47% corn planted, yet they're trying to put a 14 billion bushel crop together. How does that happen? That's exactly right. So the only number that's actually a solid number is the farmer planting survey from March 31st. And, you know, that's the only one they really have the, that's a brand new solid number. Everything else from here on out is a projection. And, and what they'll be using is their version of trend yield and also a normal average of percent harvested. Obviously, with the current uh, rain, some might suggest that might be a little off. But uh, for right now, this is the best guess and the best job they could do so early in the year. Now, the range of estimates here, we see 13. 13.9 up to over 15 billion, 15.1. Where does Allendale fit in there in your estimate? Yeah, and for our numbers overall, looking at this, uh, we're number actually 14, I believe it's 14.1 billion. So right. for the most part, we are going to be on the lower end of most of the uh, trade estimates here, but, uh, but we'll be uh, very close to the average guess. For the now, corn part. or soybeans, rather, looking at 4.1 billion to 4.3. Uh, where does Allendale fit in with your number, Rare Rich? And for our number right there, actually with that uh, 4.2 uh, 4 range, so right in the middle of the trade estimate on the, on the uh, soybean side. And for us, as far as uh, soybean stocks, we will be a little lower than most people as well. We'll be right in that uh, 480 uh, million, uh, million bushel range as well. Very good. Well, let's take a look at that. That's the, you're talking 2016-17 uh, ending stocks in that regard? Yeah. And our number is actually for the new crop number posted there. Uh, what people will be looking at as far as the new crop discussion point, uh, once we get into this 550 to 570 million bushel range for the average guess, this is going to apply prices to that sub $9 range in the coming weeks if we do see that posted by USDA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at the average uh, trade estimate there, 572 million for soybeans, corn over 2 billion here once again. A lot of folks talking, though, uh, Rich. I want to get your thoughts real quick here they you know even if, if we uh, say they were just picking numbers say if you plant 500,000 acres fewer acres of corn and you're maybe uh, five uh, six percent below average trend line yields that uh, squeezes that ending stocks number uh, pretty quick uh, no doubt. I think that's why one thing, uh, or that's our main reason why we're actually expecting a pretty good summer rally later on. Just a small, uh, a small change in the weather side, a small change like you're mentioning as far as yield. And you do have some very uh, tightened uh, crop uh, numbers up ahead if we do see something like that. So we do think the market will be very reactive if we do or when we see some type of uh, actions like that later this year. Rich Nelson joining us from our friends at Allendale, and we're going to take a break. Uh, wow, what a finish to the day here in the cattle and the feeder cattle. Rich, want to get your thoughts here. We're still uh, 12, 15 minutes away from opening the futures this morning, but get your thoughts. Rich Nelson looking at the cattle and hog trade as we continue. And 10 minutes away from opening our livestock futures trade. But again, uh, comments from Rich Nelson leading into the open here this morning. And Rich, what a close yesterday. Uh, near limit down in cattle. We are limit down. We're limit down across the board generally in the feeder cattle. So expanded limits there. But first things first, the uh, live cattle futures trade here. Uh, uh, is it a one-day affair or do you are we going to see more sell-off here today? 
from our perspective, we'll probably start out more or less mixed to a bit lower, obviously, for today's discussion based on the limit down issues. But we're all waiting on this cash cattle discussion to really to, 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 uh, to earn some fruit here for us. And uh, that 10 a.m. Fed cattle exchange uh, only has under 2,000 headlined up for uh, today's offering. Hmm. So I wonder if perhaps we won't get uh, any solid numbers traded on this cash cattle exchange today. Might even have to wait for the end of the week to get some solid numbers posted. And we did see, if we can look at the cash cattle trade here, we did see some carcass sales I noted in print yesterday, uh, 224, 225 out of Nebraska and Iowa. Uh, so the, uh, we understand producers, uh, in some areas at least, were uh, interested in getting some cattle moved early on. I think that's the case, especially after weeks and weeks of having so much buying power, uh, or I should say selling power these past few weeks, uh, and also based on the still strong cash beef trade, a lot of people will be looking at maybe some stability or hoping for stability, but like you mentioned, I think there's probably a little more selling interest uh, now lining up here than there has been in, in quite a few weeks. And still that beef trade, box beef cutout here, highest uh, in nearly two years here. We go back to August 31st of 2015, since we were up over the 242 level here, the choice cutout. That's exactly right. And a lot of people looking at this from a uh, now from a price standpoint, wondering if perhaps we're going to see some consumer resistance at these higher prices. There's no doubt these features are already locked in, certainly for Memorial Day and, and whatnot. That's not going to change. The question now that uh, the bulls are, are, are going to suggest is going to not be a problem. Is this consumer resistance or consumer acceptance of these very high prices compared with last year? Now, feeder cattle here on the day, expanded limits. So what does that mean? 675, is that expanded limit today, Rich? That's exactly right. So quite a big, uh, quite a big number lined up for, uh, for today's potential move. And the hog trade here, wow, they just keep moving along here. It'll be 12. Uh, today would be lucky 13, I guess you want to call it that, uh, in our hog trade. Let's take a look at the pork cutout as we take a look at the futures haven't opened here yet. But uh, all the arrows pointing higher for our pork cutout yesterday, highest here since mid-March. That's exactly right. And what got us really excited is yesterday's just the number itself, the daily change, two dollars and three cents higher. Mm -hmm. That was the single best uh, pork cutout number since January. So definitely we're getting some market interest back in this pork side of things. Okay, so again to clear that up so the the carcass overall, the eighty one dollar money is the best since back in January? The daily change. The daily the $2 change two dollars, yes. okay. Got it. Very good. Rich, uh, we're going to let you go and appreciate the time. I'm going to have got to have some cash uh, hog numbers here to pass along as well. And we'll see how these futures open and look forward to keeping in touch with our good friends at Allendale. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Rich Nelson here joining us each morning to kick off the day and what a day it could be here with the crop report again at noon Eastern, 11 o'clock Chicago time. As promised, go back to the hog trade. We showed you arrows pointing higher in the pork cutout. As far as the cash market is concerned, this trade uh, was generally higher. Well, it was higher for both the uh, carcass and in the cash trade here. Car cash hogs were like 50, 65 cents higher. And and showing a range there, uh, of over, a wide range here in the cash, 47 to 54, while the uh, uh, carcass trade was up $1.80 to $2 on the day, a national average just short of $67, Janet. So we'll keep an eye on that. See how these futures open in about five minutes. All right. Thank you very much. Sure.